from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Everyone, welcome to this CUBE Conversation here, exclusive coverage of Google Next 2019. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE, Big Google, Cisco News. We're here with KD, who's the Vice President of the Data Center for Compute for Cisco, and Kit Compton, Senior Vice President of Cloud Platform and Solutions Group. Guys, welcome to this exclusive CUBE Conversation. Thanks for spending the time. Great to be here. So, Google Next, obviously showing the way that enterprises are now quickly moving to the cloud. Not just moving to the cloud, the cloud is part of the plan for the enterprise. Google Cloud clearly coming out with a whole new set of systems, set of software, set of relationships. Google Anthos is the big story, the platform. You guys have had a relationship and previously announced with, with Google your role in joint engineering, integrations. Talk about the relationship with Cisco and Google. What's the news, what's the big deal here? You know, we're really excited. I mean, as you mentioned, we've been working with Google Cloud since 2017 on hybrid and multi-cloud uh, Kubernetes technologies. Um, we're really excited about what we were able to announce today uh, with Google Cloud around Google Cloud's new Anthos system. Um, and we're going to be doing a lot of different integrations that really bring a lot of what we've learned through our joint work with them uh, over the last few years. And we think that the degree of integration across our data center portfolio and also our networking and security portfolios will ultimately give customers one of the most secure uh, and flexible multi-cloud and hybrid architectures. One of the things that we're seeing in the marketplace, I want to get your reaction to this, Kit, because I think this speaks to what's going on here at Google Next and the industry, is that the companies that actually get on the cloud wave, truly, not just say they're doing cloud, but ride the, the wave of the enterprise cloud, which is here. Multi-cloud mm -hmm. is big conversation, hybrid's an implementation of that. Cloud is a big part of it. The data center certainly isn't going away. You're seeing a whole new, huge wave. You guys have been big behind this at Cisco. You saw what the results are with Microsoft, their stock has gone from where it wasn't really low to really high because they were committed to the cloud. How committed is Cisco to the, this cloud wave? What specifically are you guys bringing to the table for enterprises? Oh, we, we're very committed. We see it as the seminal uh, IT transfer, transformation of our time. Um, and clearly one of the most important topics in our discussions with CIOs across our customer base. Um, and what we're seeing is uh, really not as much enterprises moving to the cloud, as much as enterprises extending or expanding into the cloud. Uh, and their on-prem infrastructures, including our data centers, as you mentioned, certainly aren't going away. And they're really looking to incorporate cloud into a complete system that enables them to run their business. And they're looking for agility and speed to deliver new experiences uh, to their employees and to their customers. Um, so we're really excited about that. And um, we think sort of this multi-cloud approach is, is absolutely critical. And it's, it's one of the things that uh, Google Cloud and Cisco are aligned on. I'd like to get this couple talk tracks. One is the application area, multi-cloud and hybrid, but first let's unpack the news of what's going on with Cisco and Google. Obviously, Anthos is the new system. Essentially, it's just the cloud platform, but that's they're calling it uh, Google's Anthem. How is Cisco integrating into this? Because you guys had great integration points before. Containers was a big bet that you guys made. That's right. You certainly have under the covers, we learned at Cisco Live in Barcelona around what's going on with Hyperflex and ACI programmability. DevNet developer program going on. So good stuff going on at Cisco. Where does this connect in with, with Google? Because you got containers, you guys have been very full throttle on Kubernetes. Containers, Kubernetes, where does this all fit? How does customers, how should customers, your customers understand the relationship of how Cisco fits with Google Cloud? What's the integration? So, so let, me, let me start with uh, unpacking it with, uh, at the higher level, right? Philosophically, we've been talking about multi-cloud for a long time. Um, and Google has a very different and unique uh, view of how cloud should be architected. They've, they've gone down the open source Kubernetes path. It, they've embraced multi-cloud much more so than we would have expected. That's the underpinning of the relationship. Now you bring to that our deep expertise with serving enterprise IT and our knowledge of what enterprise IT really needs to productize some of these innovations that are born elsewhere you get those two ingredients together and you have a powerful solution that democratizes um, some of the innovation that's born in the cloud or born elsewhere. So what we've done here with Anthos, with Google Hyperflex, uh, with Cisco, Cisco's Hyperflex, with uh, our security portfolio, our networking portfolio, is created a mechanism for enterprise IT to serve their constituent developers who are wanting to embrace containers. Uh, 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 
readily packaged, an easily consumable solution that they can deploy really easily. One of the things we're hearing is that this, the difference between moving to the cloud versus expanding to and with the cloud. And two kind of areas pop up, operationals, operations and developers. Yep. People got to operate IT, you mentioned IT, democratizing IT, certainly with automation scale, cloud's a great win there. But you got to operate it at that level, at the same time serve developers. So it seems um, that we're hearing from customers, it's complicated. You got open source, you got developers, they're pushing code every day, and then you got to run it over, <laughs> over networks which have security challenges that you need to be managing every day. It's a hardcore ops problem meets frictionless development. Yeah, so let's, let's talk about both of these pieces. Uh, what do developers want? They want the latest frameworks, they, they want to embrace some of the new, uh, the latest and greatest libraries out there. They want to get on the cutting edge of this stuff. Um, it's great to experiment with open source. It's really, really hard to productize it. Um, that's what we are bringing to the table here. With Anthos you know, delivering a managed service with Cisco's deep expertise and taking complex technologies, packaging it, creating validated architectures that can work in an enterprise, it, it takes, that, takes that complexity out of it. Secondly, when you have a enterprise IT operator, um, let's talk about the complexities there, right? You've got to tame this wild, wild west of, of open source. You can't have drops every day. You can't have things changing every day. You need a certain level of predictability. You need the infrastructure to slot in to a management framework that exists in the data center. Uh, it needs to slot into a sparing mechanism, to a workflow that exists. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you've got security and networking at multiple levels, right? Now you've got physical networking, you've got container networking, you've got software-defined networking, you've got application-level networking. Each layer has complexity around policy and intent that needs to marry across those layers. Well, you could try to stitch it together with products from different vendors, but it's going to be a hot stinking mess pretty soon. Driving consistency across those layers from a vendor who can work in the data center, who can work across the layers of networking, who can work with security. We've got that product set between ACI, StealthWatch Cloud, providing those security and networking pieces, our container networking expertise, Hyperflex as a hyper-converged infrastructure appliance that can be delivered to IT, stood up, it's scale out, it's easy to deploy provides the underpinning for running Anthos, and then, then now you've got a smooth, simple solution that IT can take to its developer and say, hey, you know what, you want to do in containers? I've got a solution for you. And I think one of the things that's great about that is, you know, just as enterprises are extending into the cloud, uh, so is Cisco. So a lot of the capabilities that KD was just talking about are things that we can deliver for our customers in our data centers, but then also in the cloud, with things like ACI Anywhere, bringing that ACI policy framework that they have on-prem into the cloud and across multiple clouds so that they get that consistency. The same with StealthWatch Cloud. We can give them a common security model across their on-prem workloads and multiple public cloud workload areas. Um, so we think it's a great complement um, to what Google's doing with Anthos and, and that's one of the reasons that uh, we're partnered. Kip, I want to get your thoughts on this because one of the things we've seen over the past years is that public cloud was a great green field. People you know, born in the cloud, no problem. <laughs> and enterprises want to put workloads in the cloud and kind of eliminate some of the compute pieces and some benefits that they could put in the cloud have been great. But the data center never went away. And a lot, in the large enterprise, it's never going away yep. as, we, as we're seeing, but it's changing. How should your customers be thinking about the evolution of the data center? Mm -hmm. Because certainly computes become commodity. Okay, use some cloud from compute. Google's got some stuff there but the network still needs to move packets around. You still got to store stuff, you still need security. There may not be a perimeter, but you still have the nuts and bolts of networking, software, these roles that need to be taken place. How should these be customers be thinking about cloud compute integration to the data on data premise? No, it's a, it's a great point. And you know, what we've seen is actually cloud makes the network even more important. Right, so when you have workloads and SaaS services in the cloud that you rely on for your business, suddenly the reliability and the performance and latency of your network's more important in many ways than it was before. And so um, that's something many of our customers have seen. It's driving a lot of interest in offerings like SD-WAN um, from Cisco. Um, but to your point on the data center side, um, we're seeing people modernize their data centers and they're looking to take a lot of the simplicity and agility that they see in the public cloud 
and bring it home, if you will, into the data center, because there are lots of reasons why data centers aren't going away. And I think that's one of the reasons we're seeing Hyperflex take off uh, so much, is it really simplifies multiple different layers and actually multiple different types of technology, storage, compute, and networking together um, into a sort of uh, uh, a very simple solution that gives them that agility. Um, and that's why it's a centerpiece of many of our partnerships with public cloud players, in including Anthos, um, because it really provides a cloud-like uh, workload hosting capability on-prem. So the news here is that you guys are expanding your relationship with Google. What does it mean? Can you guys summarize the impact to your customers and the industry? Well, I think that, I mean, the impact for our customers is that you have two leaders working together. And in fact, they're two leaders who believe in open technology and in a multi-cloud approach. Um, and we believe that both of those are fundamentally more aligned with our customers and the market than other approaches. And so we're really excited um, about that and what it means for our customers in the future. You know, and we are expanding the relationship. I mean, there's not only um, what we're doing um, with Google Cloud's Anthos, um, but also associated announcements we made about expanding our collaboration, actually in the collaboration area with our uh, uh, WebEx capabilities, uh, as well as uh, Google Suite. Um, so we're really excited about, about all of this and what we can enable together uh, for our customers. You guys have a great opportunity. I always say latency um, is important and with, uh, with low latency, moving stuff around, that's your wheelhouse. KD, talk about the relationship expanding with, with Google. What specifically is going on? Um, let's get down and dirty. Is it, is it tighter integration? Is it policy? Is it extending Hyperflex into Google, Google coming in? What's actually happening in the relationship yep. that's expanding? So, so let me, let me uh, describe it in three ways. Uh, and, and we've talked a little bit about this already. The first is, how do we drive cloud-like simplicity on-prem? So what we've taken is Hyperflex, which is a scale-out appliance, dead simple, easy to manage. Um, we've integrated that with Anthos, which means that now you've got not only a, a hyper-converged appliance that you can run workloads on, you can deliver to your, to your developers a Kubernetes uh, ecosystem and, and, a, and, a, and a tool set that is best in class, it comes from Google, it's managed uh, from the cloud, um, and it's not only the Kubernetes piece of it, you can deliver the service mesh pieces of it, a lot of the other pieces that come as part of that Anthos relationship. Then we've taken that and said, well, to be enterprise grade, you've got to make sure the networking is enterprise grade at every single layer, whether that is at the physical layer, container layer, virtual machine layer, at the software defined networking layer, or in the service layer. We've, we've been working with the teams on both sides, we've been working together to, to develop that solution and bring that to market for our, for our customers. The third piece of this is to integrate security, right? So Stealth Watch Cloud was mentioned. Um, we're working with the other pieces of our portfolio to, to integrate security across these offerings to make sure those flows are as secure as can be possible and we detect anomalies, we flag them. The second big theme is driving this from the cloud, right? So. Um, between uh, Anthos, which is driving the Kubernetes environment to, from the cloud, our SD-WAN technology, Cisco's SD-WAN technology, driven from the cloud, being able to terminate those VPNs um, uh, at, at the end location, whether that be a data center, whether that be an edge location, um, and, and being able to do that seamlessly driven from the cloud. Inner side, which takes the management of that infrastructure, drives it from the cloud. Uh, again, a Cisco innovation, first in the industry. Um, all of these marry together with driving this infrastructure from the cloud. And what did it do for our, our eventual customers? Well, it gave them now a data center environment that has no boundaries. You've got, you've got an on-prem data center that's expanding into the cloud. You can build an application in one place, deploy it in another, have it communicate with another application in the cloud, and suddenly you've, you've, you've kind of demolished those boundaries between data center and the cloud, between the data center and the edge, and it all becomes a continuum, and no other company other than Cisco can so, do something so like that. So if I see, if I hear you saying that you're what you're saying essentially you're bringing the software and security capabilities of Cisco in the data center and around campus, et cetera, and SD WAN mm -hmm. to Google Cloud. So the customer experience would be Cisco customer can deploy Google Cloud, and Google Cloud runs best on Cisco. That's kind of is that kind of the, the guiding principles here to this deal is that you're integrating in a deep meaningful way where it's plug and play, Google Cloud meets Cisco infrastructure? Well, well, we certainly think that with the work that we've done and the integrations that we're, we're doing, that Cisco infrastructure, including uh, software capabilities like StealthWatch Cloud, 
will absolutely be the best way uh, for any customer who wants to adopt Google Cloud's Anthos uh, to consume it and to have really the best experience um, in terms of some of the integration and simplicity that KD talked about, but also frankly, security is very important and being able to bring that consistent security model across Google Cloud, the workloads running there, as well as on-prem through, through things like SelfWatch Cloud, we think will be very compelling for our customers and, and somewhat unique in the marketplace. You know, one of the things that's interesting, um, TK, the new CEO of Google, and I had this question from Diane Green, she had enterprise chops at VMware. Google's been hiring a lot of strong enterprise people lately, mm -hmm. and you can see the transformation, and we've interviewed a lot of them, I have uh, personally. They're good people, they're smart, and they know what they're doing. But Google still gets dinged for not having those enterprise chops, because you just can't, have a, uh, a trajectory of uh, those economies of scales overnight. You can't just buy your way into the enterprise. Mm -hmm. You've got to earn it, this is a certain track record. It seems like Google's getting a lot with you guys here. They're bringing, they're bringing cloud to the table for sure for your customer base, but you're bringing Cisco complete customer footprint to Google Cloud. That seems to be a great opportunity for Google. Well, I mean, I think it's a great opportunity for both of us. I mean, because we're also bringing uh, a fantastic open multi-cloud hybrid solution to our customer base. Um, so I think there's a, a great opportunity for our customers and we really focus on, at the end of the day, um, our customers and what do we do uh, to make them more successful. Um, and we think that what we're doing with Google will contribute to that. Katie, talk about, real quickly summarize, what's the benefits to the customers? If I'm, uh, customers watching the announcements, seeing all the hype and all the buzz on this uh, Google Next, this relationship with, with uh, Cisco and Google, What's the bottom line for the customer? They're dealing with complexity. What are you guys solving? What's the big takeaway for your customers? So uh, it's, it's three things. First of all, we've taken the complexity out of the equation, right? We've taken all of the complexity around networking, around security, around bridging to, to multiple clouds, packaged it in a scale out appliance, delivered in an enterprise consistent way. And for them, that's, that's what they want. They want that simplicity of deployment uh, of these next gen technologies. And the second thing is, as IT serves their customers, the developers in-house, they're able to serve those customers much better with these latest generation technologies and frameworks, whether it's containers, Kubernetes, Istio, some of the pieces that, that are part of the Anthos solution. They're able to develop that, deliver that to their, to their in, internal uh, stakeholders, and do it in a way that they control, they feel comfortable with, they feel that secure, the networking works, and they can stand behind it without having to choose or have doubts on whether they should embrace this or not. At the end of the day, customers want to do the right things, to develop fast, to be nimble, to act, to, uh, and, and to do, do the latest and greatest, and we're taking all those hurdles out of the equation. It's now. about developers. It is. Running software on secure environments for the enterprise. Guys, that's awesome news. Google Next, obviously going to be great conversations. Uh, while I have here, I want to get some, a couple of talk tracks that are, I think, important around the themes we're covering around Google Next, and certainly challenges and opportunities for enterprises. That is the application area, multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. So let's start with application. You guys are enabling this application revolution. So that's the sound bites we hear at, at um, your events, and certainly that's been something that you guys have been publicly talking about. Mm -hmm. What does that mean um, for the marketplace? Because so everyone's developing applications now. You've got mobile apps, you've got blockchain apps, you've got all kinds of new apps coming out all the time. Software's not going away, it's a renaissance, it's <laughs> happening. How is the application revolution taking shape? How is, and what's Cisco's role in it? Sure, I mean, our, our role is to enable that. Um, and that, that really comes from the fact that we understand that the only reason anyone builds any kind of infrastructure is ultimately to deliver uh, applications and, and the experiences that applications enable. Um, and so that's why you know, we pioneered, uh, you know, ACI is application-centric uh, infrastructure. We pioneered that um, and started focusing on the implications uh, of applications in the infrastructure uh, many years ago. Um, you know, we think about that and the experience that we can deliver at each layer in the infrastructure, and Katie talked a little bit about how important it is to integrate those layers. But then we also bring tools like AppDynamics, uh, which really gives our customers the ability to measure the performance of their applications understand the experience that they're delivering with customers, and then actually understand how each piece of the infrastructure is contributing to and affecting that performance. Mm -hmm. And that's a great example of something that customers really want to be able to do across on-prem and multiple clouds. They really need to understand that, that entire thing. And so I think something like AppD uh, exemplifies our mm -hmm. focus on the application. It's interesting, storage and compute used to be the bottlenecks and developers having to stand that up. Cloud solved that problem. That's right. Stu Miniman and I always talk about in the theCUBE, networking's the bottleneck. <laughs> now with ACI, you guys are solving that problem. You're making it much more robust and programmable. 
It is. This is a key part for application developers because all that policy work can be now automated away. Is that kind of part of that enablement? It, it sure is. I mean, if you look at what's, what's happening to applications, they're becoming more consumerized, they're becoming more connected, um, whether it's microservices, it's not just one monolithic application anymore, it's all of these applications talking to each other, and they need to become more secure. You need to know, you know what happens, who can talk to whom, which part of the application can be accessed from where. To deliver that, what my customers tell me, listen, you deliver the data center, you deliver security, you deliver networking, you deliver multi-cloud, you've got app dynamics, who else can bring this together? Uh, and that's what we do, is whether it's ACI that specifies policy uh, and does that, does that programmable, uh, delivers that programmable framework for networking, whether it's our, uh, our uh, technologies like detration, uh, like app dynamics as Kip mentioned, uh, all of these integrate together to deliver the end experience that the customers want, which is, if my application is slow, tell me where, what's happening, and help me deliver this, uh, this application that is not a monolith anymore, it's, it's all of these bits and pieces that talk to, uh, talk to each other. Some of these bits and pieces will reside in the cloud. S a lot of them will be on-prem, some of them will be on the edge, but it all needs to work together. And, and developers don't care that. about that, they just care about, do I get the resources do I need, and you guys kind of take care of all the heavy lifting underneath the covers. Yeah, and we do that in a, in a modern programmable way, which is, which is the big change. You know, we, we, yeah. we do it in an intent-based way, which means we let the developers describe the intent, and we control that via policy. And that's uh, good for the enterprises, they want to get invest more in developing, building applications. Okay, track number two, talk track number two, multi-cloud. Uh, it's interesting, during the hype cycle of hybrid mm -hmm. cloud, which was a while, I think now people realize hybrid cloud is, is, is an implementation thing, and so it's beyond hype now getting into the reality. Multi-cloud never had a hype cycle because people generally woke up one day and said, yeah, I got multiple clouds. I'm mm -hmm. using this over here. So it wasn't, it wasn't like a, there was no real socialization around the concept of multi-cloud. They got it right away. <laughs> they can see it, they yep. know what they're paying for. So multi-cloud has been a big part of your strategy at Cisco and certainly plays well into here what's happening at Google Next. Uh, what's going on with multi-cloud? Why is the relationship with Google important? And where do you guys see multi-cloud going from a Cisco perspective? Sure, no, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, the latest data we saw uh, or have is 94% of enterprises are, are using or expect to use multiple clouds. And, um, I think those surveys have probably more than six points of potential error. So I, I think for all intents and purposes, <laughs> it's 100%. Yeah. I've, I've not met a customer who's a uh, uh, uni cloud, uh, if, if that's a thing. Um, and so you're right, it's an incredibly you know, authentic uh, trend compared with some of these things that, that seem to be hype. Um, I think what's happening though is the definition of, of what uh, a multi-cloud solution is is shifting. So I think we started out, as you said, with a realization, oh wait a second, we're all multi-cloud. This really is a thing and there's a set of problems to solve. I think you're seeing players get more and more sophisticated in how they solve those problems. Um, and what we're seeing is it's, solving those problems is not about homogenizing all the clouds and making them all the same. Because one of the reasons that people are using multiple clouds is to get to the unique capabilities that's in each cloud. So I think early on there were some approaches where they said, okay, well, we're going to put down like a layer across all these clouds and try to make them all look the same. That, that doesn't really achieve the point. The point is Google has unique capabilities in Google Cloud. You know, certainly the, the uh, uh, TensorFlow capabilities are one that people point to. AWS has unique capabilities as well, and, and so does Azure. Um, and so customers want to access all of that innovation. Um, so that kind of answers your question of why is this relationship important to us. It's for us to meet our customers' needs we need to have great relationships, partnerships, and integrations with the clouds that are important to our customers. Which is all the clouds. And, and we know that Google Cloud is important. Well, it's, you to know, our not customers. just Google Cloud, which I think in this relationship has got my attention because you're creating a deep relationship with them on a the development side, providing your expertise on the on the network and other areas you're experts at. But you also have to work with other clouds. Because That's right. We do. You're, you're connecting clouds. That's and in the fact, and in mission. fact, we do. I mean, we have we have uh, 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 solutions. Uh, for hybrid uh, with AWS and Azure uh, already launched in the marketplace. So we, we work with all of them. And what our role we see really is to make this simpler for our customers. So there are things like networking and security, application performance management with things like AppDynamics, as well as some aspects of management that our customers consistently tell us, can you just make this the same? Like these are not the areas of differentiation or unique capability. Yeah. These are areas of friction and complexity. Yeah. And if you can give me a networking framework, whether it's SD-WAN or ACI Anywhere that helps me connect those clouds and manage policy in a consistent way, or you can 
uh, uh, giving application performance the same over these things or security the same over these things. That's going to make my life easier. It's going to be lower friction. And I'm expecting that since you're Cisco, you'll also be able to integrate that with my on-prem environment. Yeah, um, so moving, moving from hard to simple and easy is, is a good business model. Absolutely. You guys have done that in the past and you certainly have the, with, from routing and bring up the switches and storage. KD, but talk about the complexity because this is where it sounds complex on paper, but when you actually unpack the technologies involved, you know, in different cloud suppliers, different technologies and tools, throw in open source into the mix, is even more complex. So multi-cloud, although sounds like a simple reality, <laughs> The complexity is pretty significant. Can you just share your thoughts it, on that? It is, uh, and that's what we excel. We, we excel at taking complexity and distilling it down, making it simple. Um, one of the things that we've done is, because each cloud is unique and brings some unique capabilities, we've worked with those vendors along those dimensions that they're really, really passionate about and strong in. Um, so for example, with Google, we've worked on the container front. They, they, they are you know, maybe one of the pioneers in that space. They've certainly delivered a lot of technologies into that domain. We worked with them on the on the Kubeflow front, on the AI front. Uh, in fact, we're one of the biggest uh, contributors to, to, the, to the open source projects uh, on Kubeflow. And we've taken those technologies and, and then created a simple way for, for uh, enterprise IT to consume them. So what we've done with Antas, uh, with Google, it takes those technologies, takes our networking um, constructs, whether it's ACI, anywhere, whether it's uh, other networking uh, pieces on, on different parts of it, whether it's SD-WAN and so forth. And it creates that uh, environment which makes uh, an enterprise IT uh, feel comfortable with embracing these technologies. You said you're contributing to Kubeflow. A lot of people don't look at Cisco and would instantly come to the reaction that you guys are heavily contributing into open source. Can you just share you know, the level of commitment you guys are making to open source, just get that out there, and why? Why are you doing it? Yeah. Um, for us, some of these technologies are really uh, in need for incubation and nurturing, right? So Kubeflow is early, it's a really promising technology. People, in fact, there's, there's a lot of buzz about AI and And you're ML. contributing to Kubeflow, significantly. Yes, we are. Um, We're number three contributor, actually, uh, behind Google. Okay, so you're up there, you're up yeah, top, well, of, top, top of the three, list. Yeah, top three, Top of the list. Um, and why, it's just to get more collaborative, more multi-cloud well, well, fabric? I mean, again, it comes back to our customers. Um, we think Kubeflow is a really interesting open framework for AI and ML, and, and we've seen our customers, that workload type is becoming more and more important to them. Um, so we're supporting that because it's something that we think will help our customers. And in fact, um, Kubeflow figures into uh, how we think about hybrid and multi-cloud uh, with Google and, and the Anthos system in terms of giving customers the ability uh, to run those workloads uh, in Google Cloud with TPUs or on-prem with, with some of the uh, incredible uh, appliances that we've delivered uh, in the data center using GPUs to accelerate uh, these workloads. And it also certainly is compatible with the whole multi-cloud mission exactly. as well. Exactly, that yeah. So you'll see us, we're, we're committed to open source, but that commitment comes through the lens uh, of what we think our customers need and want. Um, so it really, again, comes back to the customer for us. And so you'll see us very active uh, in open source uh, areas. Sometimes I think to your point, we should be louder about that <laughs> and talk, talk more about that. Um, but but we're really well, there to help our customers. Well, it's getting out there. Customers. DevNet, DevNet Create that Susie Wee's been working on has mm -hmm. been a great success. Yep. I mean, we we witnessed it in firsthand, seeing that the Cisco Live is just packed house. Barcelona. Uh, you get developers developing on the network. It's a really a yeah, big absolutely. shift. That's a it's positive a, well, shift. Well, it's a huge shift. I think it's natural as you see Cisco shifting more and more uh, towards software to see yeah. much much more developer engagement, and and we're thrilled with the way DevNet yeah, is growing. And networking guys and your target audience gravitates easily to software. It seems to be a nice fit. Um, so good, good stuff there. Third, third talk track, hybrid. Um, you guys have deep bench of tech and people on network security, networking security, data center, and all the things involved in the years and years of uh, enterprise evolution, whether it's infrastructure and all the way through the facilities. A lot of expertise. Mm -hmm. Now hybrid comes onto the scene. Went through the little hype cycle, people now get it. You got to operate across clouds, on-prem to the cloud, and now multiple clouds. So, What's the current state of Cisco, Google relationship with hybrid? How does that fit, fit here, Google Next and beyond? So, so let, me, let me tease that in the, in the context of some history, right? So if we go back, say 10 years, virtualization, virtualization was the buzzword of the day, you know, things were getting virtualized. We created the best data center infrastructure for virtualization in our UCS platforms. Completely programmable infrastructure as code, 
um, a very programmable environment that can pack a lot of density of virtual machines, right? Roll forward three or four years, storage and compute were, were getting uh, unwieldy, or, or there was complexity there to be solved. We created the category of converged infrastructure, became the leader of that category, whether the work we did with EMC and, and, and other players. Roll forward another four or five years, we got into the hyperconverged infrastructure space with the most performant HCI appliance on the market uh, anywhere, right? Most performant, most consistent, deeply engineered across, across all the stacks. Again, took that complexity, took our, took our learnings and DNA in networking, and, and married it together to create something unique uh, for the industry. Now you're seeing uh, two other domains come together. Now it's the, now it's the cloud and on-prem. And as that comes together, we see similar kinds of complexity. Complexity in security, complexity in networking, complexity in, in policy and enforcement across layers. Um, complexity, frankly, in management, right? Uh, and how do you make that management much more simple and consumerized? We're taking that complexity and distilling it down into developing a very simple appliance. So what we're trying to develop, uh, we will deliver to the, to the customer is um, a simple appliance that they can stand and procure and, and set up much in the way that they're used to, but now this appliance is scale out. It's much more cloud-like. It's managed from the cloud, so it's got that consumer modern feel to it. Um, now you can deliver on this a container environment, a uh, container development environment for your for a developer uh, stakeholders. You can deliver security that's plumbed through and across multiple layers, networking that's plumbed through and across multiple layers. At the end of the day, you, we've taken those boundaries between cloud and data center and, and blown them away. And so you've merged the operational constructs of the old data center operations to cloud-like operations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything's as a service, you got microservices coming, so you didn't really lose anything. You mentioned democratizing IT earlier. You guys are bringing the Hyperflex, the ACI to the table, so you now can let customers run. Is that right, am I getting it right? That's right. It's all about how do you take new, interesting technologies that are developed somewhere that may have complexity because it's open source and it's changing all the time, or it may have complexity because it was not built for a different environment, not for, not for the uh, on-prem environment. How do you take that innovation and democratize it so that everybody, all of the hundreds and thousands and millions of enterprise customers can use it and feel comfortable using it and feel, feel comfortable actually embracing it uh, in a way that gives them the security, uh, gives them the networking that's needed, and gives them the way that uh, they can serve their internal stakeholders really easily. Guys, thanks for taking the time for this awesome conversation. One final question I'd like to get you both to weigh in on. Here at Google Next 2019, we're in 2019. Cloud's going a whole nother level here. What's the most important story that customers should pay attention to with respect to expanding into the cloud, taking advantage of the growing developer ecosystem as open source continues to go to the next level? What's the most important thing happening around Google Next and the industry with respect to cloud and for the enterprise? Well, I think certainly here at Google Next, the, the, the Google Cloud's uh, Anthos announcement um, is going to be of tremendous interest to, to enterprises. Because uh, as you said, they are extending into the cloud. And, and this is another great option uh, for enterprises who are looking to do that. Yeah, and as I look at it, you know, suddenly IT has a set of new options. They used to be able to pick networking and compute and storage. Now they can pick Kubeflow for AI, or they can pick Kubernetes for, for container development, Anthos for an on-prem version. Their shopping list has suddenly gone up. We're trying to keep that simple and organized for them so that they can pick the best uh, ingredients they can and build the best infrastructure they, they, can, they can do it. Guys, thanks so much. Kip Compton, Senior Vice President, Cloud Platform and Solutions Group, and KD, Vice President of the Data Center Compute Group for Cisco. It's been an exclusive CUBE conversation around the Google, Cisco, big news at Google Next 2019. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. <laughs>